In this video, we're going to put together a landing page outline in real time so you can see exactly what should go into your landing page to help convert those future users. Now, make sure you stick around until the end because there are five specific things you should be putting on your no code apps first landing page and you don't want to miss out on any of these. It's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe to this channel for new videos to help you every single week. Before you start bringing your beta users on board your app, you need to start generating interest for your app. And you can do this by sending prospective users to a landing page with an opt-in. Now, to be clear, your app won't be finished and launched when you do this. Instead, you'll put up a simple landing page, send people to it, and have them give you their email addresses saying that they're interested so that when, you're, when your app is launched, you can reach out to them and bring them on board. To clarify, there are two testing phases where you're going to be bringing external users on board your app. One of these is your pilot testing. This is really just when you're getting product validation, and realistically, you don't need a landing page to do your pilot testing. Now, this depends on the user acquisition channels you'll be pursuing, but you should be able to bring those pilot test users on board in a pretty straightforward way without having to go through and launch a landing page. But for your beta testing, where you are looking at adoption, so you're bringing a larger pool of users on board to test the app consistently over time, it can be really helpful to have a landing page up so that you can generate that interest before you actually bring that beta group on board and make your launch a lot easier because of it. So without further ado, let's just jump in and outline this landing page. I'm over in Notion and I have a really simple page set up where we're going to go through this outline. Now, if I was actually launching this landing page, I would just be building it in Bubble to keep things easy. I wouldn't actually use Notion for the public facing landing page, but for the outline, that's what I'm going to be using. So that's what we have here. And I have a theoretical app that we're going to be creating this landing page for, which as you can see here is called Coachify. So in this example scenario, Coachify is an app that helps uh, online group coaching or mentorship programs manage those programs. So it's like an internal software for these coaching programs. So this is our hypothetical scenario. It's not an app that actually exists, uh, but we're gonna go through and put together a landing page for it. The very first thing you need to do when you're creating your initial landing page is make sure you understand exactly who you're creating it for. So I'm talking about a very narrow vision really of your prospective user. Now for this Coachify example, um, I'm making this up, but we're building it for online coaches who have group coaching programs. And these are people who are really high energy. They have positive attitudes. They love helping people succeed. They are community builders. And for my specific focus, I'm looking at people who currently have small teams. So the, the business is mostly them, but maybe they have some coaches or some assistants who work to help you know, keep that program running. And I'm looking at coaches who are generating between maybe five to $600,000 in annual revenue. And the reason is because I think that those coaches are gonna be a little bit less systematic in how they run their businesses. And in order to get to that seven figure revenue mark that they're probably aiming for, they're gonna need to bring in systems to better run their business so that they can create repeatable results for their clients and really just free up a lot of their time and a lot of their team's time as well. Keeping that in mind, there are five specific things that I mentioned early on that you need to include in your landing page. So we're gonna go ahead and type those out here. The first thing you need is a header. The second thing you need is a subheader. The third is, actually, let me take that out there. The third is a CTA or a call to action, something that prompts the user to do the thing you want them to do. The fourth thing is a benefits list. And the fifth thing is another CTA, another call to action. Now notice that we didn't talk about a, a contact page or an about page or any fancy graphics, images, videos, or anything like that. We just have five simple things on this landing page. And, and here's what I want you to keep in mind. 
when your app is more established, when your company is more established and your brand is a little bit more well known, you've established a presence in search engines, on social media, then your landing page is actually going to be doing quite a bit of work for you. People are going to be finding your app, your company and brand in lots of different places that will lead them to your landing page. And your landing page will have a really, um, a re it will play a really big part in converting those users. But right now we're looking at creating a landing page to convert prospective users into becoming committed beta users. Now this is at a point where your app is not going to be well known. It's, it's not even launched yet. Your company, your brand is not well known. And so chances are nobody is going to just stumble across your landing page randomly, right? That's just not going to happen. That's just the way it works. And that's okay because in these early stages, you are going to be doing most of the work when it comes to converting the users. So later on, your landing page will be doing quite a bit of work. Early on, you will be doing quite a bit of work. So your landing page is really just the thing that is going to collect those email addresses so you can have that list of interested, committed users. Now, let that help you keep your landing page simple no one's going to stumble across it. So when you go out and make posts on social media or send emails or have conversations with people, whatever those early acquisition channels are that you're using, those posts or those conversations are going to be doing most of the converting. The landing page is just there to carry that work through and get the email address so you can, again, have that list of interested users. So keep this landing page simple. Okay, let's go back through this list and start outlining the landing page. So we're gonna start with our header and our subheader. So there's a format here that I like to follow to keep it really simple. With your header, you want to identify or help identify who the app is for and what it helps them do. And with the subheader, you want to help them understand what the app is going to help them remove or eliminate. What pain point or frustration is it going to strip out of their lives? So remember, we're talking about these high energy, really positive coaches with these programs who, who love helping people see positive results through their help. And so what we're going to say for the header is help your group coaching clients get rockstar results. Okay, so this is our header here. Let me just turn that actually into a header. Okay, so we have helped filter who it's for by saying group coaching clients. So obviously this is for someone who has group coaching clients, right? And then get rockstar results. This is gonna resonate with someone who has that positive energy and it's showing them what the app helps them do. It helps their clients get results or it helps them help their clients get results. So then we go down to the subheader and we talk about what it helps them eliminate in terms of pain points they're experiencing. For this example, we're gonna say, without spending hours each day tracking and managing them. Okay, so let's just turn this into our subheader here. Okay, so help help your group coaching clients get rockstar results without spending hours each day tracking and managing them. Who it's for, what it helps them do, and what it helps them eliminate or avoid. Now for these, uh, this prospective user who I've identified, they are wanting to get from that five to six hundred thousand dollar per per year revenue mark up to seven figures a year and so something that's probably causing a big bottleneck when they're at this point where their business is healthy but you know they haven't gotten to that uh, magical seven figure mark something that's that's a big bottleneck for them is going to be this manual stuff okay so for a cta or a call to action this is something that you want the user to do so here's what we're going to put let's get that out of the way we're gonna say, get exclusive early access to Coachify and finally systematize your client tracking, management, and communication. So one of the things I like to say is instead of calling this a, um, a beta group or you know calling out for beta users, 
I like to say get exclusive early access because that's really what it is. There's a mindset shift when you're launching this version of your app that will be really helpful for you to make. And it's going from thinking of your app as a beta app where you are like really trying to get users on board and you know going almost as far as begging them to come on board to thinking about your app being an early version and you giving people early access to that early version so that they can help mold and evolve it with their own input. So essentially you're giving people early access to so that they can help create the product of their dreams. That's pretty cool, right? That's exciting. So below that first CTA, this is where we have our benefits list. Now to save us some time, I've already typed some of this out. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste here, but I'm going to, let's see here, introduce the benefits list. So the benefits list is going to be just like a bullet point list, quite literally. And I have here manual program management means too many details fall through the cracks. Get your, uh, get your client tracking out of your head and off of your spreadsheet so that everyone in your program can get the results that you're after. Now, notice here, we are really talking about benefits and removal of different pain points. We're not talking about features yet at all. So the problem that this prospective user is currently experiencing is that when they're manually managing their program, like keeping things in their head or tracking things on spreadsheets, which can have a little bit of automation, but is mostly manual, things fall through the cracks. When things fall through the cracks, um, you know, certain things get forgotten when it comes to maybe client interactions or things that you're expecting of a client or, or something that they should be creating or doing, right? And when things fall through the cracks, they don't get results. And so this really speaks to the benefits and the, the problems that will be avoided by the use of the software, but without going into features yet. All right, so now let's get the actual bullet point list over here. And again, I'm just gonna copy and paste what I wrote to save us some time. So I have here connect Coachify to your LMS to track video completion and avoid clients falling behind schedule. Now, before we go through the rest of the list, I wanna point this out here. We're telling the, the person what we're going to help them do and then what we're going to help them avoid. And these two things should be related to each other, of course. So a feature is going to help the, the user do X so that they don't have to do X, right? So what it's helping them do so that they can avoid this other thing they're currently doing or experiencing. We're saying that you can connect Coachify to your LMS, your learning management system, so maybe where you host video content, so you can track video completion and avoid clients falling behind schedule. And then we have get automated reminders when milestones are due, so you don't realize someone's behind when it's already too late. Right, so if you're taking someone through a program, you don't wanna see that they're falling behind after they've already fallen behind. You wanna see that it could happen before it actually happens so that you can prevent it and help them get those results, right? And then we have track client progress by completion and engagement to eliminate setbacks that are hard to see early on. Similar sort of thing, right? Uh, create custom templates for each program milestone and send them individually at the right time. So no interaction is ever impersonalized. Set and adjust important dates for individual clients like start and due dates. So you never have to remember when to reach out. Now, because you're probably not building this type of app, we're not gonna actually go through and really break down why those are benefits or why those are uh, pain points. You know, I've talked about it a little bit, but that part's not really important for you. For you, it's important to understand that none of those benefits really talk about the actual features themselves. We are talking about what the person is going to be able to do with the app from a high level, but not in terms of actual functionality. And we're mostly focusing on what we're helping the person avoid. And now that just leaves us with the final CTA, that last call to action. And what we're gonna put here is want to take your coaching business to the next level, systematize your client's journeys, provide a seamless experience and enable repeatable results. Sign up to become an early access user. And then again, here we would actually have an input for 
uh, prospective user's first name and their email address so that we can have them on our list. With the bulk of your development and your testing phases in mind, the next thing I want you to do is head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash pilot hyphen prep pilot hyphen prep, and you're going to get access to a more extensive training and a free template for you to use to plan out these testing phases, make sure that your the rest of your development is running smoothly and that you can move into your user testing as seamlessly as possible. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash pilot hyphen prep to get that free training and template. We hope to see you there. And hey, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like down below and we'll see you in the next one.